Well, finally, making a living as an artist isn't always easy. In fact, the one you're about to meet struggled for years before he learned a centuries-old method of metal smithing. Susan Watson went to pay him a visit in Nolensville and discovered his future is as bright as the copper and silver he works with. You might say Ben Caldwell lives an idyllic life with his wife and two young children in their restored Victorian farmhouse. When it's time to go to work, Ben has only to walk the short distance to his studio in the backyard. It's here he loses track of time, cutting, shaping, and polishing the silver and copper pieces he proudly refers to as functional art. People who want truly unique pieces of silver or copper, they don't have anywhere to go. And they come to me and they will commission things. And so I'm kind of like a local silversmith in the old sense. The road to the success he now enjoys has been a long and winding one for Ben. He's a classically trained painter and sculptor who at one time made West African drums, worked in the Gibson Guitar Custom Shop, and then tried rather unsuccessfully to sell his own artwork. Being a starving artist is fine when you're single, but there's something about being married and not making money that just doesn't really work very well. It was Ben's father who introduced him to nationally known metalsmith, Terry Talley. My father, uh, being a patron of the arts and art collector, had collected his work for many years. And Terry was a helicopter pilot in Vietnam. He was dying of lymphoma, probably due to exposure to Agent Orange. And he was about 50. And he approached my father and said, I want to pass this on to somebody before I die. So I, I quit my job and I st started training with uh, Terry full time. In order to make money, I delivered pizza. From there, things started to happen for me very fast. And uh, my teacher told me that it would, Terry told me it would happen fast for me. And I, I explained to him, I said, listen, I've been an artist for almost 15 years now. I can't even give my art to people, much less sell it. And he said, don't worry, it'll happen. And it did, it happened very fast. And I finally made that breakthrough and, and started making a, a living doing it. And I, I moved out, out here uh, because I needed a place where I could make a lot of noise and not disturb my neighbors. When I approach my pieces, I think of them very much as works of art. And uh, it's, it's functional art, and I like that. I like the fact that, that it, it is functional. And I believe uh, part of what I believe I'm doing is I'm trying to enhance people's lives. I know that in my home, if something is well made and works well and is beautiful, it makes life in my home more pleasant. Ben, it's easy to see that you are inspired by nature. Tell me what some of these shapes are. This is... Um, a lotus blossom or, or a poppy, I make this into a tomato server. Um, this is the uh, same basic design, but it's uh, made into an oval, so it's for asparagus. Mm -hmm. um, this is a pear tree blossom or an apple blossom. Uh, this is a fern, that's and, beautiful. and that's for pasta. Mm -hmm. And these handles are based on a grapevine design, and so they twist and turn like a vine. The other source of inspiration is old silver. I study old pieces of silver. I, I keep it around. I keep old spoons and cups and servers and trays and different things like that. I keep them around the studio to remind me of where I came from. When they made things, they were not thinking about, well, can I make a thousand of these a day? They were thinking of what is beautiful and what is going to work. Ben incorporates naturally shed antlers in some of his signature pieces. I use antler because I look at an antler as a very beautiful, natural, sculptural form. His work has traveled to collectors across the nation and across the globe but it's prized here at home, too. The Tennessee State Museum has a piece of Ben's art in their permanent collection, as does Vanderbilt Children's Hospital. 
My daughter uh, almost died of a kidney infection a few years ago, and she, and actually Vanderbilt Children's Hospital saved her life. And I wanted to do something for them. I wanted to bring light and joy and lightness, peace, something like that. I wanted to bring that to a place where a lot of people who go there, you don't go to a hospital to have fun, you know, I mean, and, and so they were on display for about six months there, and, and a lot of people commented on them and really liked the sculptures, and now three of those pieces are in Vanderbilt's permanent collection. By using simple tools, centuries-old techniques, and his own talent and strength, Ben has fashioned an artistic career custom-made for success. Even to this day, I'm still humbled and honored and sometimes surprised that people will give me their hard-earned money for what I do. I'm still very grateful for that. And grateful that the art he creates today will still be treasured for generations to come. I'm sending them off into the future. It's, you know, I'm sending, they're, they're going to go on a journey that will outlast me. And that's what I think about.